Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and this video is going to be hopefully giving you guys a few tips for kind of your continued grind in Solstice, and especially when it comes to the armor grinds that many of you guys are going to be going for. As you can see, my Flamekeeper title is done, and if you want to see a guide about getting that thing completely finished, I've got a full guide to Solstice, the armor rolling, all the currencies, and everything. The link will be up right now, it'll be at the end, it'll probably also be in the description, so check that video out. And that's a sponsor video, so if that actually is one, if you guys do want to support the channel, it's nice to click through to that one and check it out. But, I'm done on this character. I am completely done. I've gilded the title, I've done all 24, and then I did the 4 to gild it, just for entertainment value, they really weren't that bad. Even Incandescent, you might worry about doing a dungeon, or a raid, or a Master Grandmaster Knight follows a solo person. But the Trials ones is where I got it done. There are three rounds, not matches. Like, it can be five to one, and that still counts as one. You need three rounds, and that's it, and this part is done. So even if you don't love PvP, if you get into that playlist a couple of times, and you eventually find somebody who's going to be decent enough to be on your team, you're bound to win a couple rounds here and there. If you just give it a little bit of effort, it's not too bad. If you're a solo player, raids, finishing a dungeon, you don't find a checkpoint. I mean, yeah, a dungeon checkpoint's going to be fast. Raid, probably less so. Grandmaster Nightfall, probably going to be difficult unless you're one of those who just grinds it out. So if you are looking to knock out Incandescent, uh, three rounds, not matches, rounds, singular rounds, will get this thing done. Just a little piece of advice there. But the idea is this character is done. So if I go over to my quest log and I look, all event challenges are complete. But if I go on to my other character, my Warlock or my Hunter... This stuff is blacked out. It's still a hidden challenge. None of this stuff is done on my other characters. And what that means is my armor is not going to be as upgraded as I would like. So if I go right now and I level this thing up with, you know, Silver Ash, I can level this thing up. And it means the stats will eventually get into that high tier category. The problem is I don't want to go through and do that stuff on my other character, but I wouldn't mind, depending on how much I play over the course of the next two weeks in grinding, I wouldn't mind earning, or at least maybe building a set of armor for my other characters. I just don't want to do all the challenges again, because while they weren't overly difficult, it is a little tedious to do them again. And there's no boost. There's no second character is 50% faster. Third character is 100% faster. And I feel like they did that before for Solstice, and it's not there this time. But currently, what is happening? I don't know if it's a bug. It's been on YouTube quite a bit, but I figured I'd put this thing out since the weekend I was busy. You can... Go to your other characters, pick up the set of armor for, from Eva Levante, your initial set, or you can actually go to the second page once you kind of talk to her once. You can buy the pieces of armor you're looking to roll. Please do not buy the ones that cost silver, Solar Ash. I don't know what these are for. I feel like they're just like a broken thing sitting in there. I'm not sure why they're there. Just please do not spend 100 Silver Ash on a piece of armor when you can buy the exact same thing without the Silver Ash. So just again... Five shards, some glimmer, buy yourself a piece of armor on the other character. Then send it to this character. Notice I'm on my Titan. Here is my Hunter armor. And you'll notice there's no spot for kindling. I've done zero challenges on my Hunter. Nothing is done on that character. And I could load up the Silver Ash right now. And then I could actually put the Spark in there. And I've already done that on this piece. You can see I have the Spark of Mobility completely applied. I'm in a mid 60s stat roll which means it's considering this to be tier three. Now, you may have seen this already, but this is one of those things, in case you hadn't seen it already, I wanted to make all of you aware of this. Because if you feel like you're compelled to do your alternate characters for the glows, that is completely up to, do, up to you. Because these little white glows all over the place, like these currently, all the little wavy, the white wavy lines like these right here, that may not work on your alternate characters. Like I move this back over, it doesn't have the glow on it that it even has sitting right here. Because you can see this part in the helmet that looks like it's kind of got that little bit of a aesthetic, that glow to it. When I move it back to my hunter, the glow's not there. If you care about the glows, you will probably have to do the challenges unless that changes. But if you just want to build yourself a set of armor and then transmog it so it looks however you want to, which you can do, you can really work into building yourself, you know, some pretty good stat rolls and just use that main character to do the rolling. That way you can still get a high stat roll. You don't have to get more kindling on your other characters by doing the challenges. And you can really build into some good stuff. 
Now, the other thing that I want to cover is what stats you should be considering. When it comes to a hunter, I know you guys want mo mobility. There's no question because the mobility gives you your dodge. And there's too much good stuff that happens with your dodge right now. There's no way you don't want that thing to be maxed out. Resilience now is actually a pretty good thing for PvE. Getting your health back quickly in PvP can help. Because most of the time the resilience doesn't do that much. You got to make sure you're not zero resilience. But 10 resilience in PvP... Yeah, it's going to give you a little bit of flinch mitigation, but not a ton. But again, it's PvE focused because when you get that stat up high enough, you're going to have like a 40% damage mitigation. If you have your damage resistance mods on top of that, you got 40% plus another 25 to solar arc and void the way I have this one set up. So you're really going to be able, like resilience now for all classes does actually make a difference. Now, you may prefer other stats over it, but I don't think a lot of people have a resilience build yet. So if that's something you want to spend a little time and get between the spark that you can use to get the stats that you're going for, and then your ghost that you can use to get to like, make sure I get 10 on every piece of armor, that's not bad. So then if I go through and I get 20, 40, 60, 80 for mobility, and then you masterwork all of those, that's another 10. So you're up to 90. You're pretty much good. And then the thing to consider is there are a couple of mods, especially for like a hunter, for example. If I'm going to come up here and I have an arc piece of armor, I can actually apply something that's going to give me 20 extra mobility. Quite powerful. Then I come down here to my chest piece. And if I put the other one on here, that's actually pretty good for stats. It's going to be radiant light. That one gives me 20 strength. And the way they work is if you have this mod plus either an arc mod on this piece of armor, which is this one works, or if I take that off, and if it, at least on one other piece of armor, an arc charge with light mod is socketed in. So here's radiant light, charge with light. That one's active, and that one's active. So now I'm getting 20 mobility, and I'm getting 20 strength. So this is where if you consider that you've already got 20 mobility, and if you go... Spark of mobility on these, it's 20, 40, 60, 80, plus your mod, you're already at 100. Then if you masterwork it, you're wasting some, so that's 110. Uh, and then granted, you won't need the mods. So in all honesty, if you have the mod, or and it's something you'll probably be able to get, just watch 801, or at some point they'll make mods more readily available for everybody. Take this into account when you're doing your build. If you go 20, 40, 60, and you're like, okay, I got 80 up here. Then if I do masterwork everything, that's up to 90. I don't need another 20 in, say, my boots. Maybe on my boots, I just want to throw on one mod down here. Now I know I'm covered because, say, on the top slot, you'd have 20 for mobility, and then you'd have 20 from the mod. That'd be ridiculous, but it would theoretically be an option. Then you'd have 20, 40, 60, 80. Masterworks are another 10, so that's 90. And then down here, that's 100. And that allows you to really focus in some other stuff as well. Your alternate slot mods that you, or the, your alternate stuff that you can go for could be like, you know, maybe you want resilience, maybe you want recovery, maybe you want discipline. So think about the mods that you can equip before you go too far into, into say, mobility, for example. And now you've like overshot and you're sitting at 110 mobility and there's nothing. It's just not doing anything for you. So the idea is to get close and then use your mods. And that's the other thing that is actually worth discussing. You'll notice mobility, discipline, strength, and resilience. If you want that plus 10 stat, it's only going to cost you three energy. That allows you to have more flexibility for your other mod slots on whatever you're messing with. If you're going for a recovery, that's going to cost you four. That's one less mod or one less thing that you potentially won't be able to use. And then if you're going for an intellect build, that's five. That's literally half of your energy if you masterwork this thing. So depending on your build, if you're going for an intellect build, you really want max intellect, that is up to you. It's not one I tend to prefer. I would much rather have my abilities like strength and discipline up and then mobility or intellect my super, I tend to recharge by killing things and other, other stuff like that that I'm not so worried about. You get ability regeneration and stuff as a titan. Depending on what you're doing, intellect is not something I value quite as much. But whatever intellect you do want, 
My recommendation is try and get it from your stats, maybe something like this, for example, where I rolled with a 15 and I'm like, all right, I'll get a 15. And then if I want strength, well, then I can go throw 10 on strength and it's still cheaper than intellect would ever, ever be. Like this is a decent looking piece of armor right here. Now with that stat increase on strength, maybe I'm going heavy into a grenade build. Sure. But it only takes three energy to do this. If I want to mess with anything more with intellect, it's just going to be much more expensive. So uh, that's why I wanted to bring up a couple of these mods. Radiant Light, that one's going to get you 20 in strength. So if you're going for a strength build, don't forget about that when you're kind of balancing your equation of what you're going for. Powerful Friends, that's going to give you 20 to mobility. You don't need to end up with 112 mobility and overshoot by the moon and waste a stat roll. So if you get 20 here, 20 here, 20 here, then you got a masterwork and a mod. You don't need to go way too crazy with it. And then you can use your boots and then even this for something else. So try and consider that when you're building out your sets that you're going for with Solstice. Solstice is so unique because you can go for 20 in one, 10 in another. And yeah, you're going to have to roll the dice a couple times on the other one. But you're bound to get something reasonable in the other two slots that really build into it. And I would say about half the time I get something in the 63 category. Half the time, I tend to get something in the 66 or 67. That's just how it's been for me, and I could be lucky. But the fact that you get a 67, a 68, a 66, anything in that range is definitely worth keeping. And then you know it's going to be in the stats that you're looking for at least halfway. That's why this whole armor... That's why this whole armor rolling grind is worth it, because if you're a relatively newer player and you don't have a stat set of armor that looks like this you can pretty directly go after it now if you've been playing for like two or three years and you've got like three different sets of armor and you're pretty much good to go and now they've even changed it up to once i masterworked it it only cost me an upgrade module and some glimmer to flop this thing over to another type yeah is this is not going to be doing as much for you i get that but for about half of the destiny players i would imagine or more who don't have that god roll set of armor who haven't built themselves something into a certain stat roll then that is, this is the time. You have two weeks to grind this stuff out. I did most of it in about 24 hours in the first day. And then it's just going to be go doing whatever I can do to get Solar Ash as fast as possible. And then re-rolling the stats till I get something I want. Same thing here. I've got this piece of arms. Go through. Once I get enough Silver Ash, roll it out. If I like it, cool. If not, I'm going to go back in. I can either buy another piece of armor if I've got enough Ash. And then I can re-roll it or... You can go do some of the bonfire bash if you need to turn it over and you'll get some armor from that for this character. So I would probably like, since you're going to be farming the silver ash anyway, probably on your main, I would buy the other pieces and see what you get when you're farming the silver ash on your main. That's the main reason I wanted to make this video. One, to show you your other characters. If you don't care about the glows, you can still farm yourself a good stat roll set of armor. And then on your main characters, those are just a couple things to think about. The mobility stat, the the way the mods can work for you, like Radiant Light and Powerful Friends, keep those in mind when you're building out your total stats that you're going to end up with. That's the main reason that I just wanted to give you guys this kind of a round two of information. About a week later, after I've had some time to digest the tips and Reddit and everything that I've seen, and hopefully this is helpful. If you did find this helpful, please drop a like below. If you have some information that I may not have included, please put that in the comments. Or if you just want to say hello, you can do that too. If you want to follow me on Twitch or Twitter, you can find me there at Ibontis right here on YouTube. I know a lot of you guys still are not subbed, so if you want to help out the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you hit that alert bell, that helps my videos make it to you in the YouTube algorithm. And then those of you who are YouTube members or Patreon subs who have gone above and beyond, thank you for that extra support. But all of you are fantastic. Good luck grinding your armor, and I'll see you soon.